Beautiful people, welcome. We've got a super fun show tonight. I'm buzzing. We've got Luca from Pudgy Penguins coming to talk NFTs, brand, and IP building. We're probably going to keep a tight panel for this show since we just want to get into a conversation and answer all the questions we have. So if you have any questions for Luca about NFTs, brand building, anything, Pudgies specifically, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'll be reading the comments and I'll make sure to bring everything up. But we made it another week. Congrats to you. Congrats to us. But Aaron, how you doing? Do you want to give us a little TLDR of crypto market before we jump into it? Hey, 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 what's going on, Tina? What's going on, Luca? What's going on, everybody? Yeah, you know, crypto market is in consolidation mode. But, you know, those of us who follow the market every day, those of us in the know, think there's plenty of reason to be bullish. Let's see. Bitcoin having about three weeks away. Uh, Sam Bankman freed 25 years. Uh, so on like two sides of the spectrum there, we got some of the some of the not so good being flushed out and some of the good on the horizon not to mention everything that's going on in altcoin land and uh you know the nft space i mean there's so many different verticals of uh cryptocurrency right now really looking forward to uh chatting with luca about what he thinks uh much respect for what he's built but uh let me throw it back to you tina you know it's a tale as old as time but when pudgy penguins were at like 5 e Aaron and I were talking and he was asking what I'm bullish on. And I was like, Pudgies, I think we should get some. We, we never did. We faded. And now we cry every time. <laughs> but I'm going to pass the mic to you, Luca. You can introduce yourself to the audience. Welcome to our space. Is your penguin you and your, your penguin? Uh, my penguin is definitely me and I'm definitely uh, my penguin. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for having me. I don't know if you guys knew this, but I'm actually on a, a spaces hiatus, and so kudos to you guys for getting me out of the uh, uh, getting me out of the burrow and uh, doing. I think what I, what might be my first space in probably three months. I was I was doing them quite quite frequently, and I'm kind of just trying to recharge for I think uh, a couple big sprints here over the course of the year. But uh, excited to chat and uh, talk all things uh, NFTs and crypto. Wow, honored, honored. I know when Frick Spaces first came out, I was uh, I was never a big fan of them. I was like, why don't I just shout, shout on the side of a corner? I might reach more people. But you know, now I totally get like why Spaces are, are popular. So you know, all it takes is one person to join, then another person joins, and uh, you know, just a good way to connect. But uh, I guess Luca, how's it going, man? Like, what are your what are your uh, thoughts on the state of the the crypto market today and like the NFT space? Yeah, it's going well. It's a beautiful night here in Miami. I'm actually outside, so I'm enjoying myself. Uh, I think the the crypto market, NFT market, is an interesting one right now. I think uh, things are happening a little bit sooner uh, than I think I anticipated. But the market always kind of optimizes for what I like to reference as Max Payne. And I think Max Payne, when the market first started heating up, was people were really forecasting, you know, late 2024. Uh, or middle 2024 post happening for things to really start to heat up. Uh, this is my third cycle, and so it, it's actually shaking out a little bit different, uh, a little bit more similarly to, I think, 2017. Uh, so kind of have to dig into the mem memory bank and try to remember how things kind of transpired then. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it's an interesting market, to say the least. I think one uh, that is going to yield a lot of excitement and... Uh, it is going to be really interesting to see how it kind of shakes out over the last uh, you know, 6 to 12 to 18 months. I think on the NFT side, uh, you know, one thing that I'm working on is uh, it's kind of a joke internally, but I'm kind of working on something called Project Save NFTs. I think NFTs right now uh, are always kind of always catch their run towards the middle to later end of the cycle. The idea is, is, you know, when you make all your amazing magic internet money, you kind of want to, you know, put that into some sort of status symbol or Veblen good and NFTs typically tend to tick off that box. Um, but regardless, I think if, if I were to just peel back at the greater NFT landscape, I actually thought to myself three weeks ago, we had a team stand up and I said, you know, as a trader, there's, there's not much to be excited about in NFT land, and, and that kind of led to, you know, how do, as now leaders of the space, I think we have a responsibility to kind of lead the charge on what the next narrative and what the next meta is going to be. 
uh, and to really bring that excitement. I think, you know, prior to, I think, the position that now Pudgy Penguins is in, we always were catching the tailwinds of what others were doing. Uh, and I think today, you know, our positioning has changed. And with great power comes great responsibility. And so we don't take that lightly. And I think our focus uh, right now is, is Project Save NFTs. And how do we just bring more excitement to the greater NFT space? If I, if I look at, a, at, his, uh, at it from a trader and a collector perspective, I look around the horizon and there isn't, isn't really anything I haven't seen already. Uh, there, there isn't, you know, for me, I'm like, well, who, who's going to do something that hasn't been done before? And what is that going to look like? It's actually easier said than done because, you know, doing things and making sure that they're the right things is also a really complicated and hard task. But uh, that's kind of my outlook. I think I'm, I'm really excited as a, a crypto and NFT holder that uh, the market has turned around. Obviously, this is a lot better of a scenario than uh, it was 12 months ago. And it's really beautiful to see, you know, community members, peers, colleagues, you know, have fun. I personally have been having fun. I think it's kind of important for me uh, from a leadership perspective to keep a finger on the pulse. And so I've been doing that 15 minutes before I go to bed. I'll, I'll go to my local uh, Jupiter or Radium and, or my local uh, MetaMask and you know, trade some shit coins and see what people are doing. And I just bought a, a recent uh, NFT mint that happened today. So it, it's... It's, uh, it's an exciting time. Obviously, this is the moment uh, we, we all have been waiting for uh, during the depths of the bear. And uh, I'm excited to be building in my first bull market. This will be the first time I've been full-time building towards an end vision uh, while the bull market is transpiring. So uh, definitely a unique, uh, a unique and, and different approach in the bear market. I'm actually pretty surprised uh, by by kind of like how I think of things, uh, but I knew this was coming. So uh, excited overall, happy for everybody. I think everyone should be excited and uh, excited to see uh, what the future looks like. So you said this is the first bull market where you're building because it's, it, do I have this right that you bought the pudgy penguins, was it in 2021 for like two and a half million dollars? Yeah, so the, the, the two year anniversary is actually a week away. Uh, so it will be officially two years since we bought Pudgy Penguins on April 4th. And uh, basically two years ago today was pretty much the beginning of the bear market. I mean, we probably entered the bear market late April. Uh, it was probably when uh, the market took a turn for the worse. And so uh, all I know is building in a bear market. Uh, <laughs> but now I'm learning how to, how to build in a bull market. And uh, it's interesting because... I've told the community this a ton of times. You you have to adjust uh, your strategy based on the arena in which you play, in which you fight, or in, and in which you compete. And the arena sh shifts and differentiates with market cycles. Now, it's important you don't get confused and distracted. Uh, there's a lot of really shiny objects, I think, and, and things that you can do uh, and, and decisions that I think you could make in a bull market that might not be advantageous or support the greater vision. That's just the nature of it. Things are moving faster. Attention is swaying quicker. Uh, but I think you, you still have, you, you have levers that you can pull in a bull market that you can never pull in a bear market. And how, how you strategize that uh, and, and how you supplement for those opportunity costs, elephant in the room, you know, your, your community has that when, when they're holding an asset. Is, a, is an interesting one. So uh, it's, uh, I think people underestimate the amount of critical thinking that I think goes into, you know, building a business that has a tokenized asset that people from all over the world can trade. Uh, because, you know, one decision can be monumental and one decision could be fatal. Uh, and, and in a bull market, uh, also doing nothing and being stagnant and doing the same thing, I think, also can be fatal uh, and, and it's probably the most fatal approach that I think most take and so there's this really interesting balance uh, where you have to be on top of mind uh, keep the integrity of the company and the vision uh, and not create liabilities and that is very much 
uh, a chess board with a lot of complexities. Uh, but if you make the right decisions, then the rewards for your community and for your company can be monumentous. And uh, you, you have the ability to capture uh, uh, a type of momentum that you can't ca capture otherwise without these type of market conditions. So uh, a lot of variables, a lot of thinking, a lot of strategizing. Now I think we're kind of in execution mode and we think we've kind of figured it out. Um, but it's, uh, it's an interesting landscape to say the least. Totally. And I totally, uh, relate to uh, like building in a bear and starting in the bear. We started altcoin daily, the very beginning of 2018. And little did we know it, it was just, just the very beginning of a deep bear market, but it allowed us to get in our 10,000 hours in. And, uh, you know, the people who, uh, you know, subscribed to us and were in our community at that time you know, they stayed and then it turned into a bull market and we're like, oh, this is so much easier. But, uh, you know, you talk about your next steps and, you know, reducing liabilities and tweaking the business model. And I'm curious to find out what the business model is. I'm familiar with, you know, NFTs from being a community member. I bought all the ones that people don't know about. Um, but, uh, you know, I know you guys are, uh, you know, congratulations on uh, Walmart restocking the, the pudgies. And uh, I think you guys have a great, like, Instagram account. Always oh, see those cartoons. But, like, what is what is the business model? Enlighten us. They made it on the TV yeah. again, too. I saw that. <laughs> TV? We, uh, we do a little proliferation. We do a little TV. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know exactly what you're referencing, Tina, but... Uh, we do we do show up on TV here. It was like the best toys ah. for the spring season one, for the plushies. Oh wow! Yeah, we do uh, we do a little news networking. I think to answer your question, Aaron, um, you know, above all else, the North Star is how do you create a brand that tens of millions and hopefully one day hundreds of millions of people know and love. The caveat is really loving the brand and, and loving the company and loving the character. I think if you can actually achieve that. Everything else works itself out, right? The, the beauty of NFTs is they're kind of a finite resource. And in Pudgy Penguin's case, there's only 8,888 of them. And then, you know, under that, there's the little Pudgies. And so in total, you have about 30,000 NFTs, which if you have a brand that actually has tens of millions of people that know and love it, you don't have enough, you know, digital collectibles to supplement for that demand. Uh, even if you kind of do the math on, you know, people's disposable income and 1% of that being in the, in the, in the bracket that can be able to afford these things. I think the, the, the math kind of shakes itself out in that respect, but there's, there's more layers to it than that. I think what we've learned over the last year is ultimately you have to create a, an ecosystem within that. And, and that ecosystem isn't predicated on more IP or more characters, but on infrastructure to actually supplement for a vision that is when these people know and love your brand, you have the opportunity to bring them in as an ecosystem user and actually bring them on chain, right? So, uh, you know, on its face, you know, Pudgy Penguins wants to create a, a global legacy IP that is known and loved, but under the hood, we really want to distribute and onboard people you know, into Web3, lever leveraging IP to do that. And so I think today and our focus really for the last two years has been you can't work on the other stuff if you don't really necessarily uh, put yourself in a position to actually achieve what is the North Star, which is creating that brand that is known and loved by tens of millions of people. But I think we've kind of created the enterprise machine where that part of the business is slowly but surely becoming autonomous and a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so now we're starting to think about, you know, what are those infrastructure layers and what are the problems that we need to actually solve uh, to do the second part of that vision, which is bring people on chain, right? Because tens of millions of people know and love my brand, like that's great. And there's demand around the NFT and I do believe it works itself out, but you can increase that conversion substantially uh, if you actually build the tooling and infrastructure for people to make that conversion. I think right now that conversion is probably abysmal uh, and for good reason because the onboarding flow from brand lover to NFT collector 
there's, there's significantly too much friction for the average day user. Uh, and so, you know, examples of solving those problems might be, you know, custody wallet solutions. We personally made one in-house or uh, another problem uh, could be, uh, you know, uh, an, an interface where people can interact and collect that's fun and, and kind of predicated around gaming. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting, uh, you know, kind of goal, but I think it's important for us to stay true to the roots, which I think at one point, probably a year, year and a half ago, I started to feel myself drift away from the crypto nativeness of, of this company. And so we kind of reeled ourselves back in probably eight, nine months ago and said, you know, the end mission here. We, we believe in our ability to create a brand that tens of millions of people know and love. That, I don't think, is rocket science for us. Uh, what matters is, is that conversion for people on-chain so that we can uplift and grow the industry, uh, not only for Pudgy Penguins in our ecosystem, but for, for the rest of the industry as well. And so I think, I think that's kind of our focus and our priorities today and uh, going to make some big sprints in that direction here shortly. All right. I uh, like, I, I see your brand everywhere. Like obviously I'm in crypto and crypto Twitter and I see it, but people sharing the gifts. I mean, you guys like really have like broken through in the brand. And as you were saying, it's like, you got that under your belt, you know, focusing on other verticals, but level with us, Luca, it could have been any IP, right? It's like really what's special about this company is you and your team could have been a different character and you could have built that up. I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so. I think I think people are underestimating the power of the penguin. The the penguin, though it was created by some eighteen and nineteen year olds in their college dorm basement, uh, actually I think is some of the most important pieces or piece of IP that I've seen uh, during my life, and 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 that might be extremely biased coming from me. Uh, and so you can take that with a grain of salt, but I believe that with every bone in my body. I really do. It, it, it's, it, it goes down to the first time I ever bought a penguin. And I was actually talking to somebody who's in this group chat. I, you know, my whole NFT journey stemmed from a group chat called NFT degenerates. And I just got added it, uh, via added to it via iMessage about I think two and a half, three years ago and or three years ago. And they were all calling NFTs, you know, we were buying, we were flipping them, we were having a great time. And the only NFT I ever called in that group chat was a pudgy penguin at 0 0.05 Ethereum. Because my gut instinct told me when I saw the penguin for the first time that this one was it and it had that it factor. And my depth of knowledge is really predicated around mass. I've really been a mass guy. So I, I, I've... I've been pretty clear on my superpower for a long time, and it's been my superpower since I kind of broke through in my professional career, which is my ability to get millions of people to see something and how that virality interacts uh, and, and kind of spreads like wildfire. That, 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 that is really what I think I know how to do best uh, outside of all of my skill sets. It's the one thing that I think I really understand. And prior to me even ever considering buying pudgy penguins, just from a straight collector natural instinct, when I saw the penguin for the first time, the, the, the group chat is filled with a couple, uh, a pretty uh, affluent group of people. And so, I, you know, you don't really want to call things and they go to zero. So you're like, at least from my perspective, I was always pretty sensitive as to like what I shared in there. Uh, I knew those guys had a lot of size, and when I told them that, you know, when, when we said to buy something or somebody said to buy something, you know, it, it, you know, a lot of money was being moved around to buy that thing. And it was the only thing I decided to ever call in that group chat. And I can't, it, it wasn't predicated on utility or team. It was predicated on the fact that the moment I saw that penguin, I knew that this had the potential to be the most viral and to be the most appealing and most adopted character in the space. At the time, I felt that. Now, when I purchased that, it was because I felt like 
I had the skill set to do what my initial instinct knew pudgy penguins could be. But that that is true to the core, so much so, there's not that many people in that group chat, but one of them recently stayed at my house for a night, and I said, you know, most people listen to that story, and they probably think I'm full of shit, but remember when I did that? And he's like, yeah, dude, I remember, I bought like 30 of those things. And I said, yeah, I know, man, it's crazy how kind of life worked out. And you can... You can take two sides of the story. You can think I'm full of shit or you can believe me. It neither matters to me, but that's the truth. Uh, you know, I, I, I naturally, instinctually believed in that penguin. And some force of nature uh, bigger than myself uh, brought me on this journey with these uh, Arctic animals or South African animals, however you want to define them, uh, and, and brought me here. Uh, but but I don't think so. And, and and the proof is in the pudding because a lot of people today, uh, and I think rightfully so, because Pudgy Penguins has seen so much success, has kind of led the charge in the NFT space. There's a lot of projects who drive a lot of inspiration from what we do, but they don't find necessarily the same success that we do. And I think that's predicated because our IP is sticking versus theirs, I don't think, is sticking as much. Now, does that mean you can't do what we do and be more successful? You, you probably can, uh, or, or you probably couldn't. That's yet to be proven. I think until proven otherwise, I will believe that the power of the penguin is hugely responsible for the success that we've seen today. I have to agree. I mean, it's so cute, and it's such a universally loved you know, art. And I've always said for mass adoption, you know, we can't just keep putting the tech in front of everybody's faces. They don't care. They simply just don't care. And you guys, I've, I've always said you have to embed it within their daily lives. And you guys have done a beautiful job of doing that. I mean, like Aaron said, you have the gifts, you know, girlfriends, boyfriends are sending it to each other. Then you touched on the kids with plushies. So like everybody in the household kind of has an interest in pudgy penguins. And I think that's an amazing thing that you've done. You talk about other projects and, you know, different approaches and everything everything who would you say right now is your biggest competition in the nft space crypto punks and there is no other competition respectfully oh really why do you say that i mean like you say crypto punks why is that and why not board apes who you recently flipped on floor price yeah i i think i think all i think anyone building in the space is great and i think all communities uh deserve their time to shine and they all deserve to win and i don't say that disrespectfully it's important that that connotation doesn't get misinterpreted uh i i genuinely believe that what nfts to me have become is not what i initially thought they were i initially thought nfts were utility and value and a ton of different things that I don't believe they are today. I think today NFTs are and have to be to see long-term success, culture, identity, and provenance. And really what you look at what we're doing at Pudgy Penguins, you, you might misconstrue that and say, well, you're doing all of these things, but everything that I'm doing is to bolster those three initiatives. Right when I go to Walmart and we do collaborations, and you know we're trying to build the brand, I'm trying to cement Pudgy Penguins into the nostalgic nerve of everyday people, so that ultimately one day it becomes a part of culture. When I'm doing gifts and we're doing Instagram and we're marketing the penguin, what I'm really doing is I'm proliferating the identity of the penguin, so that eventually, when tens of millions of people know and love it. Those that wear it as, as, as the PFP, wear it as a status symbol amongst this community of 10, 20, 30, 40 million people, right? Like, what is a status symbol to 100,000 people, right? A Veblen good that is, you know, an, an expensive profile picture to 100,000 people versus 40 million people. One yields significantly more status than the other. And so my job is to proliferate the penguin, get people curious about the penguin, educate them on the penguin, so that they eventually, 
you know, see a penguin and they say, wow, that guy's got one of those. And ultimately provenance, right? And I think all of the, the culture and proliferation ultimately bolster the provenance. And so it's really important to me that Pudgy Penguins leads the charge on, you know, executing on a lot of these initiatives and breaking barriers and pushing boundaries because ultimately I think it builds and accrues value to the provenance of the NFT. 10 years from now when NFTs are, you know, a, a, an anchor in everything that I think goes on in the digital world, which I truly believe that, there's going to be a lot of things that people look back on and reference as to how the space came to where it ultimately came to be. And I think a lot of what I want that future to look like, I want to shape and be the, the first and also the leaders in doing those things. And so when you, when you kind of look at the playbook and, and look at ultimately where we're going, I think punks to us or at least to me, uh, and I say us meaning the team, and I think ultimately I might probably speak for the community in this respect, is the one that I think has achieved these three facets incredibly well. Now, there's others that have also done it. I mean, elephant in the room is, I'm personally not running this business if it isn't for Yuga Labs and Ford Apes and all the th amazing things that they did. But... I don't know if they're tackling or, or looking at it the same way that I'm looking at it. And if we're not build, if we're not fighting in the same arena or, or building for the same end goal, then I don't know if you're competition, right? So I don't, I don't think you and I are, or board apes and penguins are directly competing against each other because I think there's different visions here. And so when I look at, well, who is the creme de la creme of the vision that I ultimately want to pursue and I ultimately want to take the penguin to be at that status, I'm ultimately driving and pushing for the penguin to be one day its own version of a crypto punk, the same way that the punk is so impactful because everyone saw what the punk did and basically copied it to a T all the way up until today, and they'll do it all the way until probably the, the end of the NFT space if that time ever comes, uh, it is the same way that I want to build Pudgy Penguins. When I want people to you know, start NFT projects and to build NFT projects, I want them to build it uh, with, with Pudgy Penguins as the North Star. right? The same way that when CryptoPunks did what they did, that became the North Star for everybody else. And so... That would be the, the answer to that question. And it's important to me, it doesn't get misinterpreted, but that's, that's ultimately the lens in which I kind of look at this stuff. I like it. I like it. And I want to kind of like pick your brain on two different things. One, practically speaking, what rights, I don't know if that's the right word, but what rights do like holders have? Like, you know, the Bored Apes famously... You, uh, you know, got the IP for that specific ape and you could like put that on different things and sell them, practically speaking, what rights. And also, it's a little bit even like a different question. I've, I've heard that you're not going to release like a, a second collection, like the, like the board apes have the mutants and the pets and everything. Any purely business oriented person on your team would tell you, hey, it's hot right now. The market's up. People want that second collection. Why not do it? Yeah, so to answer your question, at least the second one first, is just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I think that's been something that's plagued the NFT space for a while. And it just comes down to the, to the model that I will stick by, which is supply and demand. Now, it's important to note that a mint can be a huge net positive to an NFT project. I would argue mutant apes were a huge net positive to Yuga Labs ecosystem huge. I think it's one of the only exceptions where they actually time supply and demand correctly because there was clearly overflowing demand for board apes and you know at that point the price had become unattainable for most and so they opened up the ecosystem and expanded the community with mutants. 
you know, the truth of the matter is, is yeah, we could probably make a ton of money from a business perspective, minting pudgy bears, but at what expense? At the expense of the people who believe in us up until this point, is our ambitions really to just make 30, 40, 50 million dollars? Well, I say never. I mean, I sure. never. Like, as you said, sometimes it can work out. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and there probably will be a day where that comes, but the, the overflowing demand needs to be present. That is the caveat. There needs to be overflowing demand to yield a liquidity event. And my thesis is, is 10 years from now, you won't be able to incubate IP fast enough based on the demand that will, that will be here. So the question that we tell ourselves, at least internally at the company, is like, which game are we playing? Are we playing the short-term game or are we playing the long-term game? Because if I'm playing the long-term game, my objective is to win and to be the number one NFT project in the world for as long as I can and to lead by example and to push boundaries and to break barriers. And once we do that, and if we can do that for an extended period of time, the making IP and th there will be a moment where overflowing demand will be evergreen. It will be, it will be consistently present because if you believe in the idea of digital ownership, then NFTs are that medium. And if you believe that the world is going to become even more digitized, then there will be a huge need and, and desire for more of these characters and more of these universes. But that time is clearly not today, right? And so from our lens is, yeah, elephant in the room is there probably will be a day where we incubate a new character or incubate a new universe. But that day is so far removed from today because one, I think NFTs need to prove themselves once again. And I think probably you go into a third cycle and maybe a fourth. And then, and then these things don't even become cyclical anymore. They become, you know, present in people's everyday lives. And so I think from us, it's really just a time horizon thing. Sure, we can, you know, optimize for short-term gratification and compromise long-term success. And that would work. And we can make a ton of money. I mean, at the end of the day, I could tell you there's a, you know, I, I am eternally grateful for the sacrifices made by people on the Pudgy Penguins team. There's a lot of people that are critically underpaid and they would love, you know, a raise and for us to have the resources to do that. And me from a competitive landscape, I would love to show the world what we could do with 40 or $50 million. I think I could totally shake up the industry in a way that nobody's seen before. Cause what we've been able to achieve has basically been by the strap of our boot and, you know, a $9 million seed round, but, that's not even competitive to what the next guy has. So I, would, I, I personally would love that. But I know that the math ultimately won't shake out the way that I want it to. And it ultimately, today, will, will hurt the business more than it will help it. And ultimately hurt the community more than it will help it. And so, sure, that time will come. And never say never, I, you know... <laughs> The idea is that we win and we get to earn the right to do that. Uh, and I think it would be a net negative when that moment comes, but or a net positive when that moment comes, but that moment is not today or anytime soon. Darren just wants to know if we're going to have a chance to get in that launch this time. <laughs> but for my question, I kind of want to know, so you guys have the plushies, but I want to know how the toy line is connected to the NFT holders. So are they, are you making the toys from kind of existing art held by the community members? Are they from reserves? Uh, please tell us how that works. Yes, we basically license the NFTs from the holders. Uh, so all the toys that we make, we basically go to the holder uh, you know, get some sort of licensing agreement together. Uh, and then annually, every January, we pay them out uh, their distribution. And so, uh, I forget what we paid uh, this January, but it was an excess of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, hopefully this year, the plan is to pay out millions of dollars. That's actually awesome that you guys, you know, involve them in the process of that that's really cool but uh what other ip rights does an individual pudgy holder own like can they do anything with their art monetize or any brand building around their underlying artwork yeah they can i actually got in an argument with somebody who was trying to do a deal with us the other day and they were like what's this pudgy product on amazon doing what we want to do and i said well look 
you know, the, the community members have the right to take their IP and make their own products with it. Um, there, there is a stipulation in the, uh, you know, in the terms of service when you purchase a pudgy penguin, which is really there to have major brands not circumvent working with us, which is you can only monetize your penguin up to a half a million dollars a year. But I told the community this, and my stance on this is pretty open, which is, you know, if you want to make more money on your penguin than that, then we will easily extend the license uh, and let you do that. That provision is really there so that if I work with a major toy company, you know, last thing I want is, uh, you know, a toy partner to buy a bunch of pudgy penguins, remove us from the equation and just start selling toys, right? Uh, at the end of the day, you know, a half a million dollar stipulation is not enough for them, you know, to go and try to circumvent us, you know, molding and all the initial costs to kind of stand it up would kind of, you know, cut the legs from underneath them. And so that's kind of how our how our IP uh, agreement is structured. Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, you're working with big institutions. Like, are you ever worried that, you know, somebody's going to do something with the art that's going to hurt kind of the image or the business model? Um, but I guess I want to know, what do you think about Bitcoin NFTs? Have you ever thought about releasing an ordinal collection? They're doing pretty hot this se season. So we want to know. Yeah, I actually believe in, in ordinals. I believe in the long, you know, the, the thesis is pretty apparent, you know, being able to collect, you know, things on uh, the, the, the ordinals, maxis call it the mother chain. I think it's pretty funny. I, I believe in it. Uh, I think it's going to work out. I think at the end of the day, uh, the medium for trading on Ethereum to me is still better. Um, obviously, there's, you know, some mechanics in place that, would make others argue the contrary. I think what that future really looks like over the next 12 to 18 months is really going to show us, you know, what is going to stand the test of time versus what isn't. And so I actually firmly believe that some of these mechanics that are in place on Ethereum that most claim you know, hurts the NFT and in times of turmoil and times of distress, uh, it's, it's easy to think that. And I'm guilty of it. Sometimes I've also thought that as of recently, there was a, you know, an Ethereum uh, loan contagion. I was like, wow, here we go. Another variable we can't control, you know, affecting our progress. But there's another argument, which I'm actually really excited to see, which is a lot of these mechanics are going to bolster the the growth of these things in a way that we've never seen before. And Aaron, you might appreciate this as somebody who's been around for quite a while. You know, I think kind of what's happening is very akin to what we saw with 2017 coins. I kind of repeat this little anecdote like a like a parrot, but I think I'm gonna be I'm really interested to see if it shakes out the way that I think it will, which was if, if those of you guys are not familiar with what happened in 2017, you had, you know, a top 10 or 15 of the coins. You were bullish on all of them. All of them were going to Valhalla. You were stoked. You know, you tried to diversify in as many of them as you could. Uh, and then, you know, came the, the bear market. And of the 15, you know, three or four remained, or I think four or five remained in the top 10. And the rest kind of withered into nothingness. And then when DeFi Summer came around, it unlocked a lot of mechanisms that cur weren't currently present. And so another anecdote, while I give the main anecdote, was I recently went to dinner with a guy who had seen huge success in crypto. He, he actually ran one of the biggest protocols of all time. And he said, the whole world runs on leverage. And I was like, that's really interesting. He's like, he was explaining to me why the, the ETF unlock was so big and how people could basically take or hundred billion dollar portfolios, even if all that money was tied up, take a loan out on that portfolio you know, via margin, and then you know can park that money into the ETF. The the way that traditional finance works, there's so many trillions of dollars sloshing around the U.S. markets uh, that it, that it's a huge unlock. And we saw that with crypto during DeFi summer. What did DeFi summer really accomplish? It unlocked a huge set of capital because you know leverage and loans weren't really present in the first cycle. And so what kind of has happened with NFTs is I think NFTs in 2021 had their 2017 moment. You had, you know, 10 to 15 projects. 
that you thought were going to win the race. They were completely capitalized at everything going for them. They basically own the top charts, uh, you know, had amazing builders and entrepreneurs building some of these businesses. And over the last two years, you've kind of seen a lot of them wither into nothingness. And what we've seen on the background, at least from an infrastructure side, is we've seen a ton of developments on being able to unlock, uh, you know, more liquidity for these NFTs. So better loan mechanics, call options, actually being able to leverage, trade them in a positive way. And when the, when the tides are against you, the unwinds and the, and the pressure make it feel like these mechanics suck. But when the tide turns the other way, these mechanics actually can take you to heights that you don't even think these things can go. And I really believe there will be a couple ETH or PFPs in general that will surpass, you know, 2021's PFP height. And I, and I believe that because of these unlocks and the access to liquidity but it works both ways. So when the tide is against you, like I think it is, you know, now and it has been for what feels like the last two years, you don't see that, right? But I think the second the tide flips in the direction that we want it to flip, it's going to be interested to see what these mechanics can actually do. Uh, and, and that's currently where I think the, the stage we are in the market. And I think we're on the precipice of NFTs having their DeFi summer moment. Now, when that time will come, I don't know. Uh, but I think it will come at some point during this cycle. And I think the growth that you will see will be explosive and like nothing you've ever seen before. I love it. And I, I totally uh, relate to what you're saying with 2017. You know, you asked somebody back then what's going to be the top project. Maybe they would have said, oh, Bitcoin and then EOS because EOS is going to flip Ethereum. And then, you know, you just had the things had to shake out and you had to see, you know, which which projects uh, rose to the occasion. Uh, we have about 13 minutes left. Tina. And so let's get our final the questions we're chomping at the bit to, to talk about. But uh, I guess. You know, you mentioned kind of what you're doing going forward at the beginning, but give us, well, you briefly, you know, remind the community we've done this, this, and this. This is how we're, uh, you know, making it happen. But like the real question is, what comes next? Is it to be bigger and better? We're killing it. We're, you know, a top project. We're just going to get bigger and better. Or is it totally different things you're working on? I think obviously bigger and better, you know. <laughs> is the goal. Uh, I mean, you know, we have a, a, a robust strategy as to how we got here. And the plan is, is to double down on that strategy and to excel. But, you know, what I kind of referenced, uh, you know, earlier in this conversation, when, when I sat there and I was critical of the entire market, I was also just as critical about our positioning and where we were. And I knew this coming at the end of the year. I, I told the community, look, what we did last year can't be what we did this year. The thing is, is I thought I had a little more time to kind of flesh it all out and, and strategize it. And then, you know, we had like a couple weeks of like God candles left and right. And then I was like, okay, well, our timeline is significantly accelerated. But it's important that we are not predictable. It's easy today, if I were to put myself in a holder's position... It's like, okay, more toys, more expansion, more partnerships, more billions of views. All of these things are amazing. But where are the variables and what are the things that are going to get me to be like, what the? These guys really did that? Because that's some of the most beautiful, you know, that's my responsibility as a founder. I think the beauty of tokenization and what tokens do is we have a wide incentives and, and everybody in the community has their own responsibility. My responsibility, I think, is to create excitement, to make noise, and to drive attention. But I, I don't want to be the one-trick brand pony. And though there's a lot of tricks that encompass the brand sphere, it's important that we keep things exciting and we remain unpredictable. But those unpredictabilities have to be net positives. And so I know how people are going to react to toy expansion and more partners and more partnerships and more billions of views. We have that again 
pretty much in a system that I kind of reference as like a enterprise machine. It's pretty much almost there. Uh, but where I think we, we, we've been thinking these last couple of months is, you know, how do we do something that is, how do we set a meta? How do we create a new narrative? How do we do something that is unpredictable and exciting and, and, and bullish and people are like, wow, they're, they're doing it. It kind of comes back to what I said earlier. We have to lead the charge. That is the position that we're in. And doing the same thing over and over again, though I know it's impactful and I think our greater community knows it's impactful, being predictable can almost be a mental model for some, or at least outsiders, of like progress, but stagnation or not necessarily the progress that they want to see. So there, there's this really interesting balance and and uh, tightrope almost as that I, as I like to reference it, that like we're going to cross here pretty soon. Um, that is obviously like, okay, we have the Pudgy Penguins playbook. This brand is winning. This brand is succeeding. All of the things that come with that. And there's some really big things that we still haven't done yet or unlocked yet that I think could be monumental and huge for the space. And, but, but like I said, we have that part down pat. What are the layers and, and what are the levers that we can pull that make this that much more exciting is the part that I'm really looking forward to this year. And so we have a couple of them that we have planned and that we're working towards. Uh, and, and those entail a ton of different things and, and I, we won't take a, a deep dive into it as sometimes I like to ramble and I give things up that I'm not supposed to. So I'll stop there, but uh, that's kind of top of mind for us. Please give them up. <laughs> we love getting alpha here, but thank you so much. And honestly, we're rooting for you. But for those thinking about launching an NFT project today, first of all, should they? And also looking back, what is the one thing that you wish you had known before launching your project that you would tell others now? Please understand this before doing it. Yeah, my, my understanding of NFTs today, again, it's been a, it's been a huge shift. I think... This idea of utility is futile. I think it's futile because you can always put a ceiling on utility. And so I always just think to myself, well, like, how do I create value, 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 value? And, and the value thought was very transactional. It was very like, do A get equals B or, you know, you know A plus B equals C. And, and, and try to think as a, a many, you know, things I can supplement for A and B to kind of create, you know, that value for the community. And ultimately, that kind of thought creates, again, what I call liabilities. And the, the, the one thing you don't want to do is create, put yourself in a web of liabilities so that you can never get out of them. And then ultimately, you're just consistently chasing the liability. Uh, and you either have to do two things, nuke the liability and fall on your sword, which you can only do so many times, uh, or just let the liabilities destroy you. And so... I think my approach here, for those that are interested in building in, in the NFT space, one, I highly recommend it. I think the unlocks uh, that you get from building in Web3 versus building, you know, maybe an IP traditionally in Web2 are so substantial and so much more impactful to the growth and the speed in which you can grow. And so I'm just a, a huge Web3, you know, NFT aligned incentive maxi. I just, I just believe that that is a, a better way to build the brand if you know how to do it. Uh, but, but I think the approach uh, this cycle, and I think hopefully the, the, the meta is moving forward, moves away from these transactional relationships that I think people think they want, but I actually but they actually don't want like what, what people want is they want to feel smart. They want their NFT to, you know, appreciate and value. And they, and they think that these certain levers may do that. But I think the ultimate levers is what I kind of alluded to and what we're optimizing for, which is culture proliferation and provenance. And that's what you have to lean into versus this idea of, you know, creating some sort of transactional utility that is here today and gone tomorrow or has very little legs to stand on and ultimately creates liabilities that end up crushing the business uh, and the community, right? Like, 
you know, utility is very subjective because if you miss the mark on utility, not only does it create a ceiling as to how far you can go, uh, it ultimately uh, can leave a lot of room for resentment if you don't execute on it appropriately. And so the risk reward just isn't there. Uh, and so anybody building in the space, I would, I would encourage you to focus on three things, which is, you know, culture, proliferation, and provenance. And if you can succeed at those three things, uh, I, I believe you will have uh, a community and a project that will stand the test of time. And we're in such the early stages of this thing that those that survive time, the gravitational weight that simply is time, in a world where we believe in a digital future and in a world where you believe in digital ownership, the identities and the characters that will survive the turmoil from now until then will have unlimited upside and unlimited rewards for everyone who, who stuck through it and believed. I, I am a firm believer in that. And so only time will tell, but uh, I, I'm pretty convinced that this is the most sustainable thesis for long-term success. And, and the one that will ultimately be written in the history books. I love it. Guys, everybody go give Luca a follow and follow Pudgy Penguin's account. Just a couple more lightning fast questions and we're going to get out of here in three minutes. Um, what's your personal favorite underrated trait for the Pudgy Penguins? Just in a sentence or two. Underrated uh, would be the cross eyes. Okay. Um, but you're never going to put the cross eyes on like a toy, right? Oh, I totally would. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. How do you Come on. Do you only pick the cutest ones? or? I, 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 I used to be a cook in the kitchen, and now I just let one cook in the kitchen decide all of that. And so our chief creative officer just handles that stuff from start to finish. I've learned the hard way that if I try to get involved, I have too many subconscious biases. Uh, and so I just, I, just, I just let him do his thing. I see. I see. Smart. And then finally, um, Tina will be heading over to uh, NFT NYC. She's never been before. Uh, you're probably a, you know, that's probably the conference for NFT uh, people. Uh, how, how should, how can she best, uh, I don't know, just, do you have any advice for somebody's first time at NFT NYC? Well, Tina, you're invited to the uh, Pudgy Penguins event and uh, I'll be at the door. So just say your name and uh, I'll let you write it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. That's super nice. I am excited to meet IRL and connect with you. And, you know, we really appreciate you making the time today and coming out. And, you know, the people want to know. It's a silly question, but Luca, if you were to look at your playlist right now, what are some of the songs in rotation? And please don't say March of the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. Uh, a song called Sweet Victory, which you may or may not be familiar with. TNT by ACDC. And uh, actually a song I hadn't heard in a while that I heard that I started listening to again, uh, Paralyzer. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, Finger 11? Finger 11. Dude, that, you could not... That was like the early 2000s. But, uh, that was. I, I, got the, I got the Boulevard of Broken Dreams Green Day and it just kind of like sparked a, a nostalgic nerve. And I was like, okay, let me... Uh, let me go into the, the treasure chest here and see what, what, what others are, are similar. And then uh, 50 Cent's been on a tear lately, so I've been listening to a lot of 50 Cent uh, just because he's been a, a great uh, entertainer on Instagram during the whole uh, Diddy crisis. So, <laughs> <laughs> For sure, for sure. And I recently had uh, Paralyzer Finger 11 on my playlist like just like a month or two ago, so that's crazy. And yeah. Uh, but anyways, man, thank you so much for coming on. Much respect for uh, what you're building. Uh, thank you for, uh, you know, enlightening our community and, you know, sharing your alpha. Um, that's it, man. Uh, final thoughts for the uh, Altcoin Daily uh, and Twitter community. Well, my, my final thought is uh, I'll be ending the Spaces hiatus pretty soon. I've got a little bit of a world tour that I'm going on. And then uh, after that, uh, we're going to start making some... Uh, some pretty meaningful noise in the space. And so I'll be back in the spaces circuit pretty soon. I know a lot of uh, community members outside of inner igloos haven't really seen me around. It's for good reason. Sometimes you just have to get in the war room and, and prepare for a big moment. So 
Project Save NFTs is coming here pretty soon. Let's see. Uh, let's see if we can pull it off. I love it, guys. Go give Luca a follow. Go check out Pudgy Penguins. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, guys, stay bullish.